But I definitely want to make sure people understand that Bill Burr's in town promoting F is for Family. Oh, that's right. And uh, <laughs> I I saw uh, a lot of the first episode, and then I started watching with my son, and then, like, um, it's hilarious, by the way. I love it. Oh, thank you. Uh, I didn't see it. But what the older brother on? was trying to cop a feel on the porch. Oh, yeah. And he he's trying to get the girl to, you know, touch, touch, his, it. touch yeah. his dick and stuff. And I'm like, and my, because I'm watching with my son. I'm like, fuck it. Because I don't care if he get there's some curses in there. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, he's, he, he, he's, he already understands cursing. Who cares? But then that scene, I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to turn this fucking thing <laughs> I, I got to be, be responsible. But he does jump on the bike with a fucking heart on it to go help his little brother who's getting beat up in the woods, right? Yeah. yeah dude, it's really, really good. It's hilarious. Uh, what I've seen so far. Yeah, These guys hilarious. ended up seeing the whole episode. Yeah, we watched yeah. the whole episode. I had to turn it off because I couldn't get my kid to do anything else so I could finish the fucking episode. What's so. funny, this is this is the one thing that I'd never tried. To, after all these years of trying to get something on the air, I wasn't even trying to get this on the air. And it just, everything lined up. Like, I'd done the stupid, uh, you know, holding deals and all of that crap. And yeah. it just, none of my stuff I could ever get. It was always like, well, what is this going to do for children? This is too, you know, sexist, homophobic, everything you did. Unless yeah. you just had some dumb guy sitting there, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then, you know, and then you're tied up in a, 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 whatever, holding deal. And then you can't be... Do acting on stuff that's actually on TV. Yeah. And it takes a year of your career. You're just sitting on the bench. Right. And nothing happens. So I was just like, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that process anymore. And uh, I went in and I took a meeting with Wild West, which is Vince Vaughn's company. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what do you got? And I was just like, I, I nothing. <laughs> I, I don't have any ideas for a TV show. You guys make movies. I'd love to be in one. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? <laughs> you know, but I'm not doing the development process. My stuff never gets on the air. And then I was literally walking out the door. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, I got this idea for a cartoon, but I mean, and they wanted to do an animated series. So they brought me in. Initially, what it was going to be was just five. I was going to do five minute vignettes, just animating childhood stories. Sure. Like at first, early in my career, they got laughs, and then later in my career, they started getting groans. You know, and the kids who wore helmets when they rode bicycles mm -hmm. and had play dates <laughs> started coming up. Not because they couldn't relate to my dad, just because it was socially acceptable to be like, oh, that's bullying. Oh, that's blah, blah, right. blah, right? So, um, of course, I never did it. You know, procrastinating comedian, I never did it. And uh, I, ran, I ran into these guys, and next thing you know, brought the great Mike Price over from The Simpsons. And, uh, oh, that's who's doing an animation? Uh, no, uh, Gaumont. Is is the uh, I I never know what the right terms are. I think that's they're not the they're, let's see are they the production company? I don't know who they are. Gomont's the people that hired the people in Ottawa that draw it. Oh, okay. Gomont's in France. It's a long story. Like France, um, they really hold animation in high esteem, so you actually get a tax break. So it was cheaper for us to do it with them. It's nuts how the whole thing works. But oh my uh, god, you had to like uh, learn the wow. whole business, huh? Oh yeah, dude. This is a whole, this is a four year process. Wow. To get in the whole to just. Half ass pitching it to getting it going to selling it to then writing it, recording it, drawing it. Wow. And now putting it out. And four years of work, you guys can devour it in about I two know. hours and 40 minutes. And then be like, when's the next six coming up? Oh, my God. <laughs> but yeah. now we know what the world looks like and all that. That was the hardest thing I was thinking. Like Trying to develop the whole yeah, look. Yeah, because you don't even know what anybody looks like. After we draw, I was like, ah, it's going to be great. And then, then they was just like, all right, what are the, uh, you what? know, we, we spent like two and a half months on like eyes, nose, and shoulders and how people move. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I have such a respect for writers and people who on that creative level, like, what, what, what we do shrub it's just like hey do 20 minutes and it takes 20 minutes right yeah like tw do 20 minutes on on an animated show so or it'll anything take four months yes As our, i don't know i don't even know how the math works out but it was uh it was a ton of work but i'm, I'm definitely uh proud of but you had to worry about what every character looked like yes there had to be times where you're thinking oh man he doesn't look like the father i was thinking in my head at first yeah, there was or, or whatever or some some of these characters the neighbors or whatever yeah trying to convey well the thing was with the 70s too was we had to push through all of the uh you know how they've depicted the 70s like one, yeah. uh, one of our mission statements was no lava lamps because they try to make it seem like everybody in the 70s had a lava, lava lamp, lamp and drove a pacer. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember yeah. when, when the AMC pacer came out, me and my mother, 
saw it and were laughing, <laughs> going, that is the ugliest fucking car I've ever seen in my life. You could just see all the way into the car. You could see, like, the person's ankles. It was like, that looks like a giant dinner roll. And my, we were, and my mother was actually concerned. Like, she's like, is that what cars are going to look like? <laughs> and we were driving a Chevette, which was a piece of shit. <laughs> but uh, the way that they there do There we go. Look at that fucking ugly thing. I forgot about the back uh, window on the Pacer. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, oh, yeah. Try to get a rear end shot of that car in the, oh, in the, in the horizontal that. lights that wrapped <laughs> I, around the car. I guess they were trying to make it look like a, you know, a car from the future. They were, <laughs> that's like a futuristic car for the 70s. You yeah, like, I forgot like, what that looked like from the back. It's really it's the bubble <laughs> top. Oh yeah, it's man. the bubble top. It's so Epcot Center. Yeah, <laughs> I love. Yeah, it. like we're gonna colonize the moon. This, this <laughs> was the theme of that. And everybody was just like, those cars were considered horrendous. They didn't even last that long. No, no. That's the sporty one with the racing you, stripe. <laughs> you never see a pacer out there. <laughs> no, you always what? see old cars, but you never see like a pacer still kind of putting around. And because nobody kept them as classic cars, nobody kept it like, hey, I got the old pacer in the back. I think if you had a pacer R nowadays, you'd, you'd be kind of cool though, in a weird way. Dude, you can't uh, you can't believe some of the cars you see out in, in Los Angeles. Though. I can imagine just because they just don't die, they don't have that salt in the air and it's stuff. It's like the Cuba. Dude, the I, Cuba. Saw, I saw you're I a saw big car guy a too. Pontiac you know? T one thousand. I, I Do you remember those? I, I would they, have to they see were a picture. Pontiac's version of the Chevy Chevette. Oh, they sold like nine of them. <laughs> And I'm sitting there going like, oh, my God, the Datsun B210. I'm talking about those. There's always, right there? there's oh, always okay. going to be like 57 Chevys and, yeah. and yes. classic Shelbys and shit like that, yeah. GTOs. You're always going to see those because people love those cars. But add, those are the cars right there. there right, that go. shit reminds I, me of like my childhood, these cars right here, like, I, yeah. like this. I definitely remember that now that I've seen the picture, yes. It reminds me of a teacher's parking lot. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the, the student teacher's night. The student parking lot. Yeah. You would see a lot of those. <laughs> Dude, there was a teacher in my high school. Like, he drove this, sh this fucking shitbox. It was like 25 years old. It was a giant American car, like piss yellow. And the driver's side door was. Uh, no, the passenger side door, that's right, wouldn't wouldn't stay shut. Yeah. And dude, he had like quarter inch thick rope that he had wrapped around the handle and the headrest of the driver's side seat. Right. And people would just, we would walk by laughing at this guy's fucking car. Well, I, I told How him, did he teach in a school where he got to fucking face kids who see his car? I, no, he somehow had like a, a little bit of respect. Oh, there's a my, guy who put a 4 by 4 kid on the uh, T-1000. My uh, oh. my first car was the Dodge Aspen wagon. You can look it up, and uh, the back doors didn't work, so we we put a wire from one door to the other. So then my friends would just sit in the back with this wire across them that would fucking cut them in half if we ever were in a in a situation. Yeah, that's the exact car right there. That was my first what? fucking car, and uh, they had to climb in and out of the windows if they were driving. With that me. like the Griswolds. Uh, yeah, we yeah. Wagon. it is. As <laughs> a family truck stop. But, but my dad, his logic was instead of trying to get the doors fixed, we'll just uh, we'll just put wire from one door to the other across the whole back seat, and that's how. That's I drove, another thing. That's how I drove ghetto. Around. It was. We grew up ghetto. But that's we how talk, uh, Sherrod, you'll you'll be <laughs> proud. That's how that swirl started. When that, when nobody would do those those little bullshit repairs, mm -hmm. you had to throw everything out. It had to become new again. Right. Yeah. People used to get shit repaired. Or you just did stuff like that. Yeah. What had was you, the had your eight-year-old hold the door shut as you went yeah. down the highway? <laughs> <laughs> hold on to your brother while he holds on to the door. <laughs> so there's a lot of that in the F is for family. The, uh, you know, Bill, smoking and drinking. and Look, for guys, uh, you want to see some of it, huh? Oh, it's great. I don't know about this. For guys like... our age, it's, I mean, it's perfect because it brought me right back. Well, I mean, you you know, the first episode, you're bragging about getting a, uh, the character, obviously, is bragging about getting a 33 inch uh, TV. I'm yeah, like, color TV. Oh yeah, that weighed like 10,000 pounds. And they would, and, and, and no one's brilliant about that scene. You, you were, uh, that's how they would sell it, how heavy the fucking TV right, was. Because yeah. I guess the heavier the TV, it just meant that the it was better the picture. It was, it, it was just a better quality, yeah, uh, TV. Dude, they were I so big that, that when they finally died, you wouldn't throw them out. You had to no. wait your kids were big enough to help you carry it out. <laughs> yeah. So then you get a smaller, smaller TV and you right put it on top. top. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Before you know it, you got a fucking my my nine last TVs on top of each other. My last heavy TV, I uh, just moved to New York. It was about two thousand two ish, I guess. And uh, this thing was so heavy, I was starting to make a little money, so yeah, I spent some money on a TV. They actually rolled the box into my apartment. They rolled it in, and I sat there. These guys were fucking scary, so I I, I didn't question them. And I was just hoping the damn thing would turn on when they finally got in the living room. It was that fucking heavy. Remember when the tube would what? go? The tube would go, and then you wait for the TV repair guy. Right. And he'd come over, and he'd put a new tube in it. That's the thing that I do miss. Is <laughs> like You could actually get shit repaired back then. You didn't have to throw everything out. Into right. the ocean? Yeah. Oh, like my wife recently got the microwave. Like She found somebody and got it repaired. I was so She wanted to get a new one. I was like, first of all, I fucking can't stand those things anyways. I go, just there's got to be some old guy. Who fixes, yeah. With some pliers. Mm -hmm. Somebody who can fix this thing. We actually found a person, and uh, just the fact that he didn't throw it out. You know yeah. what? Do you know one of the saddest places on earth is when you see one of those old VCR repair shops? <laughs> it's like, how is this place open? There's always like, like 1,500 behind him that people just didn't even come back to pick up. <laughs> it just said, fuck it. The complete chaos of the inventory and somehow the guy knows where everything is. <laughs> uh, that's probably how that happened. He's dressed like the man from Chico and the Man. <laughs> the old beat up brown hat. <laughs> oh, shit. So, that's that's a lost art form, though. The repairman. The repairman. When was the last time you had a repairman in your house for anything? That's like no. when you, when your cell phone dies. That's just it. You just you give it to them. They repair it, and they give it to some poor kid in like right. you know I don't know where. Yeah. Other side of the planet. Only uh, repairman that I even remember is fucking Maytag repairman, and he right. raped Arnold and uh, Willis. No, no kidding. Arnold and oh, Dudley. <laughs> that, uh, good old Dudley. Dudley. We're uh, uh, yeah, we're at a time where now when something breaks, you just your mindset is ah, time to get a new one. You don't even think maybe I could fix this fucking thing. Those TVs used to be furniture though. We used to consider t televisions like furniture. They have to have drawers and shit on them. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what was that? But uh, and they still on the planet out there floating in the Pacific. Well, what the F is for family? When is it? We got a couple more days, right? The eighteenth, I think. It, yeah, it comes out Friday. Friday. And the, the, uh, would like to tell you some of the people on it. Laura Dern yeah, sure. does the voice of my wife. Justin Long yeah. plays Kevin. Oh, I love that. Uh, Sam that. Rockwell plays Vic, oh. the next door neighbor. Haley Reinhardt does the young voice of me, which was the hardest thing to find. Who? Haley Reinhardt. She was uh, she was actually a finalist in one of those shows, uh, American Idol or something like okay. that. But she, it's very hard to find a voice actor to do a little boy's voice because it, the you know if the boy's complaining, you know, and the voice hasn't changed yet, he's going to sound like a little bitch. You right. know what I mean? So she's got that <laughs> she's got that raspy thing. So it it was hopefully not annoying. Uh, that was that's great. what we were trying not to to, to get away from. But uh, Debbie Derryberry, Mo Collins, uh, Kevin Farley, Kevin oh, Michael no Richardson. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got a whole bunch of people who in does, there. Who does Kevin Farley play? Uh, he plays uh, um, uh, Babe and a couple of the other. He does some of the. Uh, Outer characters, okay. and we're uh, which. But what's great about the show is we'll gradually. We already have something to develop his character even more. God willing, if we get like a second, second season, season. Um, and and it's a and it's a series too because each episode leads to the next one, right? Yeah, the serialized, I which, uh, serialized. I, which, I, which I didn't want to do. I probably should use. I didn't want to do that. I because I'm an idiot. I was going like, let's just do it like The Simpsons. Everything stands alone. Yeah, and that was Netflix idea. Okay. And I was like, why the hell, why would they want to do that? And then within like two hours of writing that way, it took it to a whole nother level. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm an idiot. This is, I get it, because this makes people keep wanting to uh, to watch as you, as you go along. You so. got to see the and, next one. And I would assume they, but each episode absolutely stands alone in its own right. Right. Well, yeah. So how we're going to do it is each <laughs> each season, hopefully, is going to be a semester of these kids' school. So if we do gotcha. like five, six seasons, the kids will only age like two years. So I was going to ask you about that, because mm. all the cartoons we grew up with, they, no one aged. No one age. No yeah, one we'll, age, we'll yeah. try to keep it. Uh, you age him a little bit. Age him a little a bit. A little bit, just because I. I always think that like, uh, um, what's his face? Uh, the the biggest craziest one that I saw. Child star like changing from one season to another. Do you guys remember that show, Alice? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Dude, the kid Tommy. Tommy. Oh, yeah. Tommy yes. was like the most adorable kid ever, and yes. then he came back with this fucking <laughs> this. long, thin head and these <laughs> yeah. giant horse teeth. Yeah. Like, oh, and who, he looked like he was twenty five. Yeah, he was like That's seven what, four when he came <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, he <laughs> came <laughs> back. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's like, look up there. He's like, That's the problem with t working with kid actors. That's why even with Chris, Chris Rocky, uh, with uh, everybody hates Chris. They have to shoot everything in a row. Yeah. Because these kids grow up, grow up so fast. 
They got a different face on the next season, so you got to yeah. do it. You yeah, got to do it all summer, no. all winter, all spring. He was this cute little kid, and then he came back. He had like this horse head. This yeah. long. Yes. <laughs> he was a weirdo. I see it. That's hilarious. <laughs> Can I mention one thing about Bill's show? Yeah, you you got to see it too. There, yeah, Justin. I loved it. Uh, the one part uh, uh, that really, really made me laugh it was the TV show that the dad would watch, the cop show. Oh, right. Colt Luger. Yeah, <laughs> god damn. And it's that it's that old seventies cop show where the guy's got like a big gut and he's an older guy. <laughs> it's the old uh, yeah, in shape, out of shape, shape, out of shape. Guy. Yeah, uh, what, it, what, it's, what it's supposed to be. Colt Luger is like a guy who used to be a movie star. And he was definitely a sex symbol back yeah. in the day, and now he's doing TV. So, what's what? And then he's always anybody he fights is always some minority. They're always half his age, totally shredded, but yeah. inexplicably, he wins the fight with his bastardized like kung fu. Because yeah. that was like right around then, like people were trying to understand what Bruce Lee was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, like one of the great fucking karate <laughs> scenes you'll ever see is Frank Sinatra in the Manchurian Candidate. Oh, yes, yes. When, when he does that thing where he just sort of has his hands in yeah. karate chop mode. Mode, right. It was just classic. Uh, yeah, they were kind of doing something like this in the war before we were shooting. <laughs> and they, they, they had some sort of stance. I can't remember with the post-traumatic, uh, the shell shock the, uh, of it. So, uh, yeah, so he's got a catchphrase. A man's got to do what a man does. Got, yeah. <laughs> You you could do a spinoff just of that show, and I would watch that as oh, well. We're, we're thinking about doing a full episode on the... Uh, <laughs> Smart. He's one of our favorite... Th- yeah, and he's total sexist. Yeah. And, yeah, he hit, he hit you know, slapping women. Yeah, and he just, he's a amazing. woman in her face. Yeah. <laughs> it really made me laugh. <laughs> the good old days. You'd certainly yeah. feel like you've seen that TV show growing up. Yeah. That's so we sure. use the TV. The TV is where, like, a lot of the, uh, like, you know... We couldn't have the characters just going around, like being over the top like a lot of the sexism the 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 underlying racism and all that is mm. in the tv with the ridiculousness of the commercials and the way that they advertise right. them like uh like he works at a uh, at the airport, airport right. for Mohican Airlines, and they have this you know Native Native American um, one of those offensive logos and stuff that was considered not even remotely offensive back then. <laughs> you didn't even think twice back then. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, yeah you wait till you see the episode. We actually we actually do a commercial. Oh, good for uh, for Mohican Airways. I, I think this F is for Family is going to just uh, destroy. And how long really, did it take really, to do the yeah. six episodes? Like four total years. Total he said. Four, well, the, I mean from, the whole from, process. Once they greenlit it, from the thought okay. to the to the 18th four years but to, to actually the creative process we find like this is a show you have the money and right. start writing that was september of last year okay and it took us about a year to do these six but like a lot of that though we, we I mean like i said like two months of it was literally sitting there going okay what does this world look like and right. really describing like, we, we, go, we were like we don't want saturday night even saturday night fever that new york you know, because that was shot then. Yes. But they made, by the end of it, they just distilled it down to what John Travolta was wearing in that movie. Mm. So everybody had a collar out to here and platform shoes. So right. we were trying to be like more like uh, Rust Belt Serpico era, that, that early 70s Vietnam War just starting to end. So we got out of the whole disco thing, which has been done to death. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. yeah, like Kevin's into like, you know, prog rock. Oh, really? Oh yeah, we got a we got a band. Fuck, I can't wait to see all these. Episodes. Oh yeah, we got an episode know. where he goes he goes to see his <laughs> what favorite prog rock. Are you mentioning actual bands? No, but he's into this prog rock band, <laughs> and he wants to go see them. Yeah. And uh, they're opening for like this Led Zeppelin type band. It's one of those bad bills. Like, okay. like why would you put this band on <laughs> right. in front of this other band? Which you know always happens as a comic. So we have a lot of that type of stuff going to a football games. Another one, what what the stadiums used to be mm. back. You know, like, you go there. You just had the giant trough that everybody just peed in. <laughs> yes. Dude, I remember when I went to Fenway Park. Yes. Fenway Park. I swear to God, they had like troughs that faced each other. So you were standing there, you just had that uh, junk out. I remember standing there, like, on my tiptoes, trying to p- piss yeah. into this fucking horse truck. Ah, and there was yes. all these fucking guys with their hairy balls and dick yes. out. And it's just like... As it was, a little kid, it's, it's disturbing. It, it totally was disturbing, but, but it was just considered like, yeah, you know, whatever. I, I don't remember uh, actually having it so where you could go on both sides of that to pee. I don't remember that. They had, like, it was... All, I remember those things, and they would just put all the ice in it. I just remember being eye level with, with every hairy cock at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, Everybody's, I, I, and, it, boy. I and it might be the traumatic way that I remembered it. 
Mm. I made it came walking in and just the angle. Tippy toe and I remember doing it. was a lineup of dicks. It might have <laughs> yes. been that. I can't really remember as far as <laughs> that's I, I, how I remember it is it was a trough and yeah. then there was a little space like with some sort of water and then on the other side was another trough and people just standing there. Dude, nobody had oh. stage fright back then. Nope. You're just no. eh, take it out, let's go. We've you all would, fought in a war. Who you're gives absolutely a shit? right. You just pull it out. Fuck it. My biggest yeah. fear as a kid was touching my dick on that fucking thing. I had to oh. tip toe every time because it was just one size they didn't have a lower one for children you would just be able to get the helmet just over the, holding over their the sons top. over the, standing on the side of the rail <laughs> As a little kid, you just get the helmet just over right the top. The, the, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> it's gross. They had none of that shit figured out. They didn't have urinals for yeah. kids yet. You stood that, there pissing right next to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> or you remember that they would lift up the kid. Yes, they would lift the kid up or have the kid standing on the edge peeing in there. Yeah, all that shit. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? A lot of this, I mean, that's what the, why this thing is going to be so damn good. A lot of this stuff is in. I want to see Billy's Epis character. For, Bro, where's your, for family. can we put it? It's, uh. Which one are you? Well, Billy does the voice of the father. Oh, the father. The dad. And the dad, the dad is an who's, amalgam of all of our dads. Right. But so. who's the, the, the character playing you who the, the chick's doing the voice? Haley Reinhardt. Right. Uh. Little Bill. So that's Little the, Bill. the ki kid, the sister, Maureen. Okay. So, I mean, you know, I had like four brothers and a sister. So this is, there's only two, two boys and a girl in this. And, uh, yeah, I like, uh, I've, I've heard some interviews that you did and, uh, yeah, in the, in the writer's room, it was pretty much everyone's, uh, experience growing up that you threw into. Yeah. This. Well, I, I wanted my family and everybody to be able to watch this and not be like mortified. I wanted them to see like elements of like, oh, I remember that, like that, that I'll put yeah. you through that fucking wall. Like and, my dad used to say that. Yeah. And he did one time say it. We were outside. And he was mad. And ah, I'll put you through that fucking wall. I mean, like he's pointing at the woods. <laughs> so we're sitting there like snickering, like wanting to be like, yeah, dad, there, there is no wall. We're, we're, outside. <laughs> we're outside. But like, God, you don't want to say that. Yeah, no, up. no, not at all. You need some more lines, dad, because we're not inside right now. Yeah, you need a new catchphrase. Yeah, catch catch it only phrase. works inside. Yeah, I know it. I know it sounds silly because it's it's a cartoon, but they really did capture the look of the '70s. Even like the nice. woods. Even like the oh. woods where you go out there and there's like uh, there's like uh, uh, old like washing machines and shit you would just find out there in the woods. Yeah, and there was always the new housing developments, right, right. that they were building and like you know, go play around. There was in no internet. Yeah, there's no internet, so you go, was... you'd steal lumber to build a tree fort. Yes, or yeah, you just throw right. rocks through the windows. That's you right, just... the tree fort that, that that's you were, in the scene. You were one of the throw rocks through the windows. I've told that story oh, yeah. too. I, I grew up with a kid. Uh, I used to say his name. Maybe I shouldn't anymore. And we would run through the developments. I thought, oh my, wow, we get to go upstairs when the house isn't even built yet, and go in the basements <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And we're just having like, you know, easy fun. And then this kid that we would run with for a little while, I finally had to tap out. He was the one taking the rocks, going fuck that. It was just taking out yeah. windows in these uh, of these houses and these new developments. And I remember as a kid being scared shitless, going, <laughs> "Do you remember this isn't fun anymore?" <laughs> <laughs> we used to go in there like, dude, we were like, I swear to God, I was like six, seven and hanging out with kids who were like five. Yeah. It would be a cluster of kids and yeah. you'd go into a house and they had just started to build the stairs. All they had was the framing of it. Yeah. So they didn't have the piece of wood that went across. So we would be like going up on the skinny yes, piece of wood. All that, yeah. And it was like, you know, the, the one that led from the main floor to the second floor was right above the basement. So if you fell, you fell straight down. down all the way down to the dirt. <laughs> yeah. Completely remember all this. Yeah, and yeah. your parents used to just let you go outside. Yeah. Like, go outside, and then you'd run into your friends, and then you'd run... Your group of kids would run into another group of kids. Yeah. And with your kid brains... You would decide what you were going to do that day, yeah, and yeah. there could be anything from let's play so, baseball to let's throw rocks in somebody's yeah. pool. But my th my thing was the the excitement was trying to get upstairs when there's no staircases and go, wow, this is cool. And then you know, we oh, did yeah. that in abandoned buildings. Like, would just pick up these boulders and throw them through bay windows. <laughs> like, this is, look, can't we just do them? It's already yeah, fun. Yeah, we didn't we didn't do that every time, but a couple of times we we. Uh, we, we yeah we did do stuff like that. We played in abandoned I, buildings, not oh, so many new developments. See, First I would love to. Do, I would have loved to done that. I, I love going. My boys, it. one of my boys was in junior high school. Was right next to our school, and we every time at lunchtime we used to go in there and play. Yeah, my boy Sam fell through the floor. It was like third floor, second floor fell through that and landed in dog shit. Come on, and it was the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> it has to be a pile of dog. Shit. I remember saying to my 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 childhood friend. 
I would just say to him, I'd say, hey, you want to go play with matches? <laughs> like you would literally just, and yes. you'd go, yes. you'd like get some pine needles together and you just light them on fire, like right underneath the tree. I set the woods on fire one time and thank God this guy was there. He was over there in two seconds because I was near his fucking house. Yeah. Oh. And he had a giant like trash can that he had filled up with water and he just kept dumping it on there. Another one of my friends, <laughs> another one of my friends, he, uh, he lit the woods on fire to the point the, f- <laughs> the, f- the the uh, the fire. firehouse had to come down and put it out, and he was so nervous he went down to the firehouse and ratted out my brother. Really, going like I think I think I know I know who did it. I, you know that, that yeah. they knew they were lying, but we knew it was him because his dad used to have we used to call them monkey matches. Right. He had these books of matches. Remember back then, like monkeys doing human things was yeah, considered yeah. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so he had these books of matches, <laughs> and it would be like you know a picture of a monkey like with a cigar playing poker. Right. So his dad used to, I guess, found those funny. So we saw those, like the evidence there. So we knew it was him. Mm. And, uh, you know, this just, <laughs> our, my, there was our, no internet. There was no, no video games. So you just lit was, shit on fire. Our, uh, our, I have a similar story. Our story ended a little differently. It was me and my two brothers. We're all almost the same fucking age. And we did the same thing. You start with little pine needles, little dry leaves. And then you get bored. Like, ah, I think we can handle a bigger fighter, uh, fire. And then we got the army men and they're melting. Yeah. And then I remember, like <laughs> it was yesterday, just a little wind over to this next pile of leaves. Fast forward, the whole fucking woods are on fire. The fire department shows up and, and, and you know, has to put out the fucking fire behind our house. It was getting close to our neighbor's house. What? It was really bad. And as kids, we're thinking, we can handle this, and we're, like, trying to stomp out the fire with our little fucking <laughs> sneakers. And Dude. then they, they lined us up in the backyard, and I just, I remember from school that oily rags could uh, start fires. Yeah. So they're, they're fucking questioning us now like who the f- do you guys know anything about it and stupid me i'm thinking i'm gonna get i'm gonna you know get us out of this i'm like i i uh i remember seeing some oily rags in the woods <laughs> 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 Idiot. and then uh we grew up with a it was a nice it was a big house with woods behind us it was our playground and uh our punishment was we fucking were grounded for the whole summer and couldn't leave the fucking driveway and as a 12 year old uh. we were probably even younger than 12 that was fucking torture and then our friends would come over and our cousins and stuff and they'd be able to run in the woods because we had tree forts and all that shit up there right and we had to fucking hang out on the driveway and watch everyone yeah, else and your parents stuck playground. with the punishment too. yes they, they did, did they back did. in the yeah. day now you feel guilty after five minutes like all right fuck Dude, we used to have a rule we had a rule in our house when we were little if you if you didn't finish your dinner or your supper as we called it if you didn't For, finish your supper they my parents would take uh like cellophane Wrap up your meal, stick it in the fridge, and you had to eat it for breakfast. Oh, yes. right. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. yeah. So you learned to uh, not waste, are, right? Sure. Are we long lost brothers? I yeah. Think I still... These are all the same exact so fucking story. That's the worst right. thing was when I remember if you had like cube steaks, which were right. hard to chew as a six year old when they were hot. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was such yeah. a piece of shit part of the whatever the cow is a bad eating guy. that for fucking breakfast while everyone else is having yeah. waffles, <laughs> and you got that in green half eaten green bean casserole. God. But that was that that was normal too. I. You know, that uh, would be considered abuse. Dude, I, my mother one time was driving down the street. My two youngest brothers were just were acting up, and she goes, "I swear to God, if you don't two knock, if you two don't knock it off, I'm pulling over to the side of the road and I'm spanking your bare butts right on the side of the road." And they just kept going. They kept going. And my mother pulled over, spanked their bare ass on the side of the road. And all I remember was people driving by, blowing the horns, like, laughing their ass <laughs> off. <laughs> Dude, nowadays they you would call a cop they immediately. Oh, you're arrested. It, yeah. They film it and they take your kids away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we had the same thing with our food, but my mom would set up a timer, too, to put that little extra element into it. Like you it. have to eat before the timer? Oh, yeah, off. whatever it was, you five, ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes to eat your plate? I don't, I, it's prison. Plate. but I swear to you, I don't remember what would happen if that fucking timer went off. Maybe, uh, maybe nothing, that, maybe we never got to that point because we were pretty scared of my mom in general growing up. Dude, I remember one time, we, we, my mother made something, I, we fucking hated it, it was this sandwich spread, it literally looked like vomit, I swear to God, it was <laughs> it just like she'd grind it up in this fucking meat grinder, yeah. it was called, just called sandwich spread, right? <laughs> and, and we hated it. Was it, it. like pickles or something smashed oh, up it was, in it? There was pickles in there and bologna and just, oh, just, oh, oh just and pig was, noses and I don't know what, it was fucking and it gross. Was, it was called like a sandwich spread? Sandwich spread. spread. I don't remember that yeah oh, all right it's gross right so she made this shit and we hated it we say we're not eating it and she'd be like it tastes good and we'd be like mommy it looks like throw up she'd be like oh it does not and it, it totally did yeah Ooh. so we were sitting there just trying to force this shit down and she loved it because she's like you guys are going to sit there 
until you finish that. So then she could actually clean the house or do whatever the hell she had sure. to do. And we were like quarantined. So I remember one of my brothers, I still can't even rat him out. He took three quarters of his sandwich and was crying laughing. He took it and he just dropped it behind the stereo. Like, <laughs> like there, was, there was this, my dad had this giant wood thing that he kept the stereo no. on. He just dropped it behind there. No. And we were laughing our asses off. And then what was funny was she was just like, did you eat it? He goes, yep, ate it all up. And then we just got on with our lives and completely forgot about it. And like four days later, it's just reeking. <laughs> oh. Behind there, there was all ants and stuff. And, uh, you know, then there's usual, who did it? Who did yeah, it? Nobody yeah. would rat it out. Then everybody has to go to bed at like two in the afternoon. <laughs> and you're just laying in your bed wide awake with all this kid energy. Holy fuck, I remember that too. Yeah. They would send you to bed and the sun would still be out for some yeah. punishment. That'd be the worst. But I, I'm one of seven, so I think that was just like, we need some fucking time to ourselves. So I remember, everyone's going to bed at four today because that one acted up. I remember if I got sent to bed, we we lived in a split entry. Yeah. So our bedroom, like the like the, the windows were at like ground level. Yeah. So if I got sent to bed early, my brother or somebody would be like, yeah, <laughs> wh why isn't Bill out? Oh, he got sent to bed for whatever. <laughs> and then they'd come, they'd knock on the window and start giving me shit. And I'd get all mad start crying in my bed <laughs> <laughs> you're playing basketball right outside your window and you're in bed for the night oh having uh -huh. a great time and you're just laying there <laughs> wide awake completely normal behavior when we were growing up I, I have two kids I can't imagine doing any of this stuff I'm gonna tell I my mother I can't imagine I yeah, found my mother had this, these old coins yeah and I stole them and I flagged down the ice cream man and I, I got like whatever, I got like a fun, whatever the fuck I got, some ice cream cone, and then I just gave him like something from the 1800s. And, <laughs> and he just looks at it and is like, all right, and just fucking drove away. So then I eat, eat the ice oh, no. cream. And then the guilt, like the telltale heart, the guilt is just on me. So I just literally go to my mom and go, hey, mom, do you, do you have any old coins? <laughs> and she was all excited, thinking like I had, was showing interest in something yeah. intellectual, and she couldn't find them. And then she realized that they were gone. Oh, and then man. it became like, what's going on? Who took this? And nobody knew. And then, of course, we were looking for them. And I, of course, found the little satchel that she had. Yeah. It's like, I found the satchel behind the toilet. You know, like, I'm a good boy. Yeah. Then I tried to blame my brother so you brought it up to take your name off the suspect list he, there I, was some guilt yeah no yeah had and, some guilt. and the whole thing blew up it all blew up in my face and that was another one i remember going to bed <laughs> like you're going to bed go to bed with no supper yeah or just go to bed yeah, in no, general you know i forgot until this day going to bed early not like seven or eight like in the middle of the afternoon you brought up a great memory and we would all That's have to, torture. And and like Bill said, they would find an excuse at all because you acted up. Everyone is going to bed now, or because we can't figure out who did this this thing. Everyone goes to bed early. Yeah, my parents would line us all up, just stand there going, "Who did it? Right? Who did? Did you do it? Yeah. Who did it? And then we just sit there. I remember one time my my older brother had uh, gotten into some paint and he painted the Matchbox cars. It wasn't that big a deal, but they, you know, you're not supposed to do it. You got some paint on the floor. Yeah. And they just kept going, "Who did it? Who did it? We were standing there forever. I'm like, my fucking feet were falling asleep. <laughs> so I finally just go, I go, I did it. And my mother goes, you did it? And I go, yeah. And she goes, all right, go to bed. Right? It's like, fucking one in the afternoon. I'm like, fuck. So I go down and go to bed. And then my older brother came in. He's like, he, my older brother's going like, Bill, you did it? You did it? And I'm thinking in my head, like, no, you did it, you fucking yeah, asshole. Obviously, you I was like, did I'm not going to stand there for the rest of the day. <laughs> right. You had yet 50 opportunities <laughs> right. you know to, you to admit it. it. Right. Of course I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at a still of uh, F is for her family, and like you said, he nailed the 70s. Yeah. The, that's linoleum in the kitchen. R oh, yeah. Remember linoleum? Dude, yeah. the phone on the wall. Well, that's that's a great joke in there, too. But yeah, the linoleum. No, I mean, the phone is, I, that. I mean, yeah, whatever. It's more the linoleum. That's that's great detail detail right there yeah we worked uh we worked really hard on and the horrendous uh, i can't colors. wait to see this thing i the can't colors. wait everything's the orange horrendous and yellow oranges and browns and greens green. that we grew up with yeah that was modern back then <laughs> the, the back 70s then. was brutal orange brown green well look uh, having yeah. said that what's cool though is if, yeah. oh, is, if is if you didn't grow up in the 70s there's still enough of of this you know oh no the the yeah no the it's Bill, you're going to do great with this. Come on. Yes. for Family. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's on Netflix. It starts on uh, Friday. You can watch all six episodes. Are there Maybe you got the whole world established in there. You can. It's easy to do episodes. I'm hoping next, you know, God willing, if we get like a second season. I mean, I don't know if that's 10 or 12 that we got to do, but like, 
Uh, you know, dude, like, you know, the episodes are just something simple, like, hey, let's go throw snowballs at cars. Like, that's something, or somebody takes the family car out, or somebody's, you know, tries weed for the first time, or mm-hmm. it's just like, it was all, like, that's what the vignettes were going to be. It was just like, right. our family looked like Norman Rockwell. Right. So it was just going to be like, family gets a Christmas tree, right. which is a total Norman Rockwell thing, but it's all the dysfunction. Of course. But then it always came back to, in the end, you had the fire going, and you were decorating it, and there was really this thing, but then it was all the psychological damage of all the of shit that happened. Of course, to get up, there. Up until then. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. There's a... Uh, yeah, it's uh, that's awesome, man. That's You're, great. But that's we how... We uh, Rod. You'll, you'll be <laughs> proud. That's how that swirl started. When, that, when nobody would do those those little bullshit repairs, mm-hmm. you had to throw everything out. It had to become new again. Right. Yeah. People used to get shit repaired. Or you just did stuff like that. Yeah. What had was you, the had your eight-year-old hold the door shut as you went yeah. down the highway? <laughs> <laughs> hold on to your brother while he holds on to the door. <laughs> so there's a lot of that in the F is for family. It, the, uh, you know, Bill, smoking and drinking. and Look, for guys, uh, you want to see some of it, huh? Oh, it's great. I don't know about this. For guys like, our age, it's, I mean, it's perfect because it brought me right back. Well, I mean, you you know, the first episode you're bragging about getting a, uh, the character, obviously, is bragging about getting a 33 inch uh, TV. I'm yeah, like, color TV. Oh yeah, that weighed like 10,000 pounds. <laughs> and they would, and, and, and no one's brilliant about that scene. You, you were, uh, that's how they would sell it, how heavy the fucking TV right, was. Because yeah. I guess the heavier the TV, it just meant that the it was better the picture. It was, it, it was just a better quality, yeah, uh, TV. Dude, they were I so big that, that when they finally died, you wouldn't throw them out. You had to no. wait till your kids were big enough to help you carry it out. <laughs> yeah. So then you get a smaller <laughs> TV and you right put on it on top. top. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Before you know it, you got a fucking my my line TVs on top of each other. My last heavy TV, I uh, just moved to New York. It was about two thousand two ish, I guess. And uh, this thing was so heavy, I was starting to make a little money, so yeah, I spent some money on a TV. They actually rolled the box into my apartment. They rolled it in, and I sat there. These guys were fucking scary, so I I, I didn't question them, and I was just hoping the damn thing would turn on when they finally got in the living room. It was that fucking heavy. Remember when the tube would what? go? The tube would go, and then you wait for the TV repair guy. Right. And he'd come over, and he'd put a new tube in it. That's the thing that I do miss. Is like You could actually get shit repaired back then. You didn't have to throw everything out. Into right. the ocean? Yeah. Oh, like my wife recently got the microwave. Like She found somebody and got it repaired. I was so She wanted to get a new one. I was like, first of all, I fucking can't stand those things anyways. I go, just there's got to be some old guy. Who fixes, yeah. With some pliers. Mm-hmm. Somebody who can fix this thing. We actually found a person, and uh, just the fact that he didn't throw it out. You know what? Yeah. You know one of the saddest places on earth is when you see one of those old VCR repair shops. <laughs> it's like, how is this place open? There's always like, like fifteen hundred behind him that people just didn't even come back to pick up. <laughs> it just said, "Fuck it." The complete chaos of the inventory, and somehow the guy knows where everything is. <laughs> uh, that's probably how that happened. He's dressed like the man from Chico and the Man, some old beat up brown hat. <laughs> yeah, like we're gonna colonize the moon. This, this was the theme of that. And everybody was just like, those cars were considered horrendous. They didn't even last that long. No. No. That's the sporty one with the racing you, stripe. You never see a pacer out there. No, you, you always what? see old cars, but you never see like a pacer still kind of putting around. And pl- cause nobody kept them as classic cars. Nobody kept them like, hey, I got the old pacer in the back. I think if you had a pacer Re- nowadays, refurnished. You'd, you'd be kind of cool, though, in a weird way. Dude, you can't uh, you can't believe some of the cars you see out in, in Los Angeles. Though. I can imagine. Just because they just don't die. They don't have that salt in the air and it's stuff. It's like the Cuba. Dude, the I, Cuba. Saw, I saw, <laughs> You're I saw a, big car guy a too, Pontiac you know? T1000. I, I Do you would, remember those? I, I would they, have to they see were a picture. Pontiac's version of the Chevy Chevette. Okay. They sold like nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there going like, oh, my God. A Datsun B210. I'm talking about those. There's Is that always, right there? There's no, always okay. going to be like 57 Chevys and, yeah. and yes. classic Shelbys and shit like that, yeah. GTOs. You're always going to see those because people love those cars. But add, those are the cars right there. there right, that go. shit reminds I, me of like my childhood, these cars right here. Like, I, yeah. like this. I definitely remember that now that I've seen the picture. Yes. It reminds me of a teacher's parking lot. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the, the student parent, teacher's night. The student parking lot. Yeah. You would see a lot of those. <laughs> Dude, there was a teacher in my high school. Like, he drove this, sh- this fucking shit box. It was like 25 years old. It was a giant American car, like piss yellow. And the driver's side door was, uh, 
No, the passenger side door. That's right. Wouldn't wouldn't stay shut. Yeah. And dude, he had like quarter inch thick rope that he had wrapped around the handle and the headrest of the driver's side seat. Right. And people would just we would walk by laughing at this guy's fucking car. Well, I, I told how him, did he teach in a school where he got to fucking face kids who see his car? I, no, he somehow had like a, a little bit of respect. Oh, there's a my, guy who put a four by four kid on the uh, T one thousand. My uh, oh. my first car was the Dodge Aspen wagon. You can look it up. And uh, the back doors didn't work, so we, we put a wire from one door to the other. So then my friends would just sit in the back with this wire across them that would fucking cut them in half if we ever were in a, in a situation. Yeah, that's the exact car right there. That was my first what? fucking car. And uh, they had to climb in and out of the windows if they were driving with That's like the Griswolds. Uh, yeah, we yeah. It is. <laughs> As a family truck stop. But, but my dad, his logic was instead of trying to get the doors fixed, we'll just, uh, we'll just put wire from one door to the other across the whole back seat. And that's how that's I drove, another thing. That's how I drove ghetto. Around. It was. We grew up ghetto. But I definitely want to make sure people understand that Bill Burr's in town promoting F is for family. Oh, that's right. And uh, <laughs> I, I saw uh, a lot of the first episode, and then I started watching with my son, and then like, um, it's hilarious. By the way, I love it. Oh, thank um, I watch it. I didn't see it. But what the older brother on? was trying to cop a feel on the porch. Oh yeah, and he he's trying to get the girl to you know touch, touch his, it, yeah. touch his dick and stuff. And I'm like, and my because I'm watching with my son. I'm like, fuck it, because I don't care if he get. There's some curses in there. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he's he he, under, he's, he already understands cursing. Who cares? But then that scene, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna turn this fucking thing. Like, I, I gotta be, be responsible. But he does jump on the bike with a fucking heart on it to go help his little brother who's getting beat up in the woods, right? Yeah, yeah dude, it's really, really good. It's hilarious. Uh, what I've seen so far. Yeah, These guys hilarious. end up seeing the whole episode. Yeah, we watched yeah. the whole episode. I had to turn it off because I couldn't get my kid to do anything else so I could finish the fucking episode. What's so. funny? This is this is the one thing that I'd never tried. To, after all these years of trying to get something on the air, I wasn't even trying to get this on the air. And it just, everything lined up. Like, I'd done the stupid, uh, you know, holding deals and all of that crap. And yeah. it just, none of my stuff I could ever get. It was always like, well, what is this going to do for children? This is too, you know, sexist, homophobic, everything you did. Unless yeah. you just had some dumb guy sitting there, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then, you know, and then you're tied up in a, 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 whatever, a holding deal. And then you can't be... Do acting on stuff that's actually on TV. Yeah. And it takes a year of your career. You're just sitting on the bench right. and nothing happens. So I was just like, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that process anymore. And uh, I went in and I took a meeting with Wild West, which is Vince Vaughn's company. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what do you got? And I was just like, I, I, nothing. <laughs> I, I don't have any ideas for a TV show. You guys make movies. I'd love to be in one. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? <laughs> you know, but I'm not doing the development process. My stuff never gets on the air. And then I was literally walking out the door. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, I got this idea for a cartoon, but I mean, and they wanted to do an animated series. So they brought me in. Initially, what it was going to be was just five I was going to do five minute vignettes just animating childhood stories. Sure. Like at first, early in my career, they got laughs, and then later in my career, they started getting groans. You know, when the kids who wore helmets when they rode bicycles mm -hmm. and had play dates <laughs> started coming up. Not because they couldn't relate to my dad, just because it was socially acceptable to be like, oh, that's bullying. Oh, that's blah, blah, right. blah, right? So, um, of course, I never did it. You know, procrastinating comedian, I never did it. And uh, I, ran, I ran into these guys, and next thing you know, brought the great Mike Price over from The Simpsons. And, uh, oh, that's who's doing an animation? Uh, no, uh, Gaumont. Is is the uh, I I never know what the right terms are. I think that's they're not the they're, let's see are they the production company? I don't know who they are. Gomont's the people that hired the people in Ottawa that draw it. Oh, okay. Gomont's in France. It's a long story. Like France, um, they really hold animation in high esteem, so you actually get a tax break. So it was cheaper for us to do it with them. It's nuts how the whole thing works. But oh my uh, god, you had to like uh, learn the wow. whole business, huh? Oh yeah, dude. This is a whole. This is a four year process. Wow. To get in the whole to just. Half-ass pitching it to getting it going to selling it to then writing it recording it drawing it Wow, and now putting it out and four years of work you guys can devour it in about I two know. hours and 40 minutes Is And they'll be like what's the next six coming up? Oh my god, <laughs> but yeah. now we know what the world looks like and all that that was the hardest thing I was thinking like trying to develop the whole Yeah, because you don't even know what anybody looks like after we draw I was like, ah, it's gonna be great And then then they was just like all right What are the uh, you what? know, we, we spent like two and a half months on like eyes nose and shoulders and how people move I was like, oh my god Like I have such a respect for writers and people who on that creative level like but what what we do shrub we it's just like hey do 20 minutes and it takes 20 minutes right yeah like tw do 20 minutes on on an animated show so or it'll anything take four months yes as our 
I don't, I don't even know how the math works out, but it was, uh, it was a ton of work, but I'm, I'm definitely uh, proud of. But you had to worry about what every character looked like. Yes. There had to be times where you're thinking, oh, man, he doesn't look like the father I was thinking in my head at first. Yeah, there was or, definitely. Or whatever, or some, some of these characters, the neighbors or whatever. Yeah, trying to convey. Well, the thing was with the 70s, too, was we had to push through all of the, uh, you know, how they've depicted the 70s. Like one, yeah. uh, one of our mission statements was no lava lamps. Because they try to make it seem like everybody in the 70s had a lava, lava lamp, lamp and drove a pacer. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember yeah, when, when the AMC pacer came out, me and my mother saw it and were laughing. <laughs> going, that is the ugliest fucking car I've ever seen in my life. You could just see all the way into the car. You could see like the person's ankles. It was like, that looks like a giant dinner roll. And my, we were, and my mother was actually concerned. Like She's like, is that what cars are going to look like? <laughs> and we were driving a Chevette, which was a piece of shit. <laughs> But uh, the way that they there do There we go. Look yeah. at that fucking ugly thing. I forgot about the back uh, window on the pace. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, oh, yeah. Try to get a rear end shot of that car in the, oh in the, in the horizontal lights that wrapped <laughs> around the car. I guess they were trying to make it look like a, you know, a car from the future. You know, <laughs> that's like a futuristic car for the 70s. You yeah, know, like, I forgot look, what that looked like from the back. It's really it's the bubble <laughs> oh, top. Oh yeah, it's man. the bubble top. It's so Epcot Center. Yeah, I love. <laughs> yeah. it. Oh shit! So that's, that's a lost <laughs> art form, though. The repairman. The repairman. When was the last time you had a repairman in your house for anything? That's like no. when you, when your cell phone dies. That's just it. You just you save. give it to them. They repair it, and they give it to some poor kid in like right. you know I don't know where. Yeah, other side of the planet. Only uh, repairman that I don't even remember is fucking Maytag repairman, and he right. raped Arnold and uh, Willis. No, no kidding. Arnold and oh, Dudley. <laughs> that, uh, good old Dudley. Dudley. We're uh, uh, yeah, we're at a time where now when something breaks, you just your mindset is ah, time to get a new one. You don't even think maybe I could fix this fucking thing. Those TVs used to be furniture though. We used to consider t televisions like furniture. They had to have drawers and shit on them. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what was that? But uh, and they still on the planet out there floating in the Pacific. Oh. What well, the F is for family? When is it? We got a couple more days, right? The eighteenth, I think. It, yeah, it comes out Friday. Friday. And the, the, uh, would like to tell you some of the people on it. Laura Jones yeah, sure. does the voice of my wife. Justin Long yeah. plays Kevin. Oh, I love him. Uh, Sam good. Rockwell plays Vic, oh. the next door neighbor. Haley Reinhardt does the young voice of me, which was the hardest thing to find. Who? Haley Reinhardt. She was, uh, she was actually a finalist in one of those shows, uh, American Idol or something like okay. that. But she, it's very hard to find a voice actor to do a little boy's voice because it, the you know if the boy's complaining you know and the voice hasn't changed yet he's going to sound like a little bitch you know right. what i mean so she's got yeah. that she's got that raspy thing so it it was hopefully not annoying uh that was that's great. what we were trying not to, to to get away from but uh Debbie Derryberry Mo Collins uh Kevin Farley Kevin oh, Michael no Richardson oh, yeah. yeah we got a whole bunch of people does, in there who does Kevin Farley play uh he plays uh um uh babe and a couple of the other, he does some of the uh, outer characters. Okay. And we're, uh, which, but what's great about the show is we'll gradually, we already have something to develop his character even more, God willing, if we get like a second, second season. season. Um, and, and, it's a, and it's a series too, because each episode leads to the next one, right? Yeah, the serialized. I uh, which, serialized. I, which, I, which I didn't want to do. I probably should have used I Why? didn't want to do that, because I'm an idiot. I was going like, let's just do it like The Simpsons, everything stands alone. Yeah. And that was Netflix's idea. Okay. And I was like, why the hell, why would they want to do that? And then within like two hours of writing that way, it took it to a whole nother level. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm an idiot. This is, I get it, because this makes people keep wanting to, uh, to watch as you, as you go along. You got to so. see the and, next one. And I would assume they, but each episode absolutely stands alone in its own right. Right. Well, yeah. so how we're going to do it is each, each <laughs> season, hopefully, is going to be a semester of these kids' school.